Tonight, the National Watchdog removes restrictions on a Port Augusta aged care facility. And Air Peninsula residents urge to get their properties fire safe. From our seven Spencer Golf Studios, your nightly news with John Hunt begins now. Good evening. The Port Augusta Edenfield Family Care Facility has had its sanctions on new entries removed as the facility attempts to fix alleged staffing and mismanagement issues. Community members are convinced the federal government is not doing enough. A fight for the care they deserve. Outraged families continue to monitor Port Augusta's Edenfield Care Facility after it was found to be non-compliant with A industry standards. There was a complaint about Ramsey Village and they moved in and found the place was non-compliant. They slapped on the sanctions, which included uh, for them to continue operating, to keep their licence, they had to put in a, a quality control officer. The home will undergo regular compliance checks until the 12th of May, with the staff also attending training twice a week. We've been visiting that home for years. My grandmother has been in there for quite a while. And I know those staff pour their heart and souls into the job that they do, but there has been chronic under-resourcing in that facility for years. Occupancy numbers have dwindled since the sanctions were implemented. However, the member for Grey is optimistic about the facility's future, with admissions now allowed to resume. They're allowing new, new tenants to go back in, so um, I think we should take that as a tip. Uh, they will be watched very closely. However, community members are convinced this process is just another Band-Aid solution. They say the issues are part of a bigger problem facing the region's aged care sector. We cannot say that just by failing them and asking them to hire a third-party consultant, which is what has been done in this case, solves the problem of systemic mismanagement. Edward McCarroll, 7 Spencer Golf News. Our region's firefighters are urging people to reassess their fire safety plans. It comes after the CFS responded to three blazes in one week on the Air Peninsula, with crews saying the damage has lasting effects on landowners. A busy week for those tasked with protecting our properties. Two shed fires, one at Kapini and the other at Kao, causing major damage. While the blaze in Wararambu left a family with nothing. It is reported that people at the house fire self-evacuated um, and I mean they lost everything that they owned uh, pretty much uh, in the house in the house fire. The roof collapsed in on it um, after the fire got hold. The combined damage bill estimated to be more than half a million dollars. The cow one was around 100,000. You're looking at a replacement of the, the building as such. Same as the Kapini one and the house fire um, up there we, we put that at around about half a million because they'll need to replace the whole house. These incidents serving as a reminder that bushfires aren't the only concern at this time of year. We recommend that households and businesses maintain good housekeeping. They do not stockpile large amounts of combustible materials such as cardboard boxes and pallets. The MFS is encouraging people to revisit their home fire safety plan. It's important um, as part of the home fire safety plan that everyone in the house knows what to do in the case of a fire, how to ring the emergency services. For more information, visit the MFS website. Henry Millick, Seven Spencer Golf News. South Australia's road toll has risen over the weekend after a fatal crash near Port Lincoln. Police and emergency services were called to Proper Bay Road at Tulk around 9.45 on Saturday night after reports a car had crashed into a stovey pole. The driver, a 46-year-old local man, died at the scene. The female passenger, a 53-year-old woman from Wyala, was airlifted to the Royal Adelaide Hospital where she is in a critical condition. The man's death was the fifth life lost on South Australian roads this year. Two-wheel drives are now allowed back on the Stuart Highway following weeks of road closures due to flooding. Previously, only heavy freight, emergency service vehicles and high-clearance four-wheel drives were permitted to cross the flooded section of the road north of Glendambo. However, the Transport Department says enough water has now subsided. Users are only able to travel in one direction at a time at a maximum of 20 kilometres an hour between the hours of 7am and 7pm. 
The RAA will assist the state government's rollout of electric vehicle charging stations across regional South Australia. The insurer says the extended charging network will future-proof the state as a new wave of EV starts to enter the market. An energetic leap forward for those plugging in. Over the next two years, the RAA will install 536 electric vehicle charging points across South Australia's road network. We enable our members who purchase an EV to explore the whole of South Australia and enjoy the state to its fullest. Charges will be installed at 140 locations that are currently without one in an attempt to create a statewide network. The government hopes to reduce range anxiety in potential buyers. It's not plausible to think that people would buy an electric vehicle if they couldn't take it absolutely everywhere that they might want to go, so we're making sure that that's possible. We know this infrastructure will overcome that range of anxiety that exists for people looking at EVs. The Energy Minister says the government is excited to kick-start projects in preparation for the looming boom in EV sales. In Australia last year, we sold 20,000 EVs. That was up from 6,900 the year before. So a significant growth in that EV market. Private industry won't create a charging network until there's enough EVs, and there won't be enough EVs until there's a charging network. So the government is stepping in with this program. Edward McCarroll, 7 Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, Broken Hill welcomes a new batch of nursing graduates and a new round of work to protect seagrass begins at Wireless Foreshore. Welcome back. South Australia's COVID response has expanded, with new rapid antigen test collection points opening in regional towns across the state from today. A number of places in the mid-north have been added. The test kits can now be collected from Bullaroo, Borough, Crystal Brook, Jamestown, Oruru, Peterborough, Riverton and Snowtown. To receive one, residents must register on the SA Health website before being able to collect one of the tests. The Far West Local Health District has welcomed a number of new registered nurses and midwives to the region. 29 graduates are starting their career in the Silver City and surrounding regions after being part of the Grad Start program. A long career beginning here in Broken Hill. These graduate students are part of a 2,800 strong cohort that will work across 130 New South Wales health facilities. Some are locals while others have travelled from places like Queensland. Yes, I am. My husband would never move Broken Hill, so I'm here for the good long haul. Um, but I'm excited about that because I've, my passion was always to work in a hospital and this is my dream. These nurses are a welcome addition to a district always looking for new members. They are part of the Grad Start program, which exposes graduates to clinical and professional settings. Some of the nurses will be staying in Broken Hill, while others will travel to Wilkenya, Tibberborough, Ivanhoe and beyond. I'm really excited about working um within like a more of a remote Aboriginal community, um, providing woman-centred care to women and just supporting like natural physiological births. The group started off their posting with orientation, meeting staff, mentors and supervisors that will help with the transition. All are looking forward to using their new skills. You know, what you've learnt for the last few years and put it all into practice and say, hey, actually, let's all come together. Joshua Mercer, 7, Spencer Gulf News. Regional Development Australia has hosted an information session focusing on the problems the York Peninsula and Mid-North are facing to grow its workforce. Economists from across the country offered their solutions on how to attract more people into the region. The job market is about to get even bigger in the Mid-North and York Peninsula. With more than 15 private projects underway in renewables and manufacturing, Experts predict there'll be about 800 job vacancies in those sectors by 2024. Despite COVID restrictions, the region's unemployment rate continues to fall to record lows. A key issue in delivery of projects going forward uh, is not only going to be funding, but, it, but it's going to be um, access to workforce. Uh, but then also in, in, in the short term to, to cover for absences and disruptions. One of the biggest challenges has been attracting and retaining workers in the region. Many employers are hoping migrants can fill the gaps once borders reopen. It's likely that we, you know, we're going to see um, 
it take a little while for all those streams of workers to, to, to come back on. It, it, it certainly is part of the solution. The shortage of rentals and interstate people buying properties as holiday homes also adding to the issue. Some councils asking homeowners to be a part of the solution. Writing to non-resident ratepayers, asking if they'd possibly consider putting their property on the sort of short to medium term rental market, or sort of medium, sorry, medium to longer term rental market because of these shortages. Christian Kominos, 7 Spencer Gulf News. For those who regularly enjoy wireless foreshore, the sight of seaweed on the beach might be a cause for concern. However, the Wireless City Council says there's an important reason why the grass is there. It's a vital part of the natural ecosystem surrounding Wyala's iconic foreshore. The Wyala City Council undertaking works on the beach side to ensure maximum protection against the elements. At the moment we've been doing it annually, uh, usually around February, but we've had some uh, a few issues with uh, coast protection, EPA licensing issues and things like that for this year's funding, so we've only been able to do it now. The council working with the Departments of Environments and Water to make sure the foreshore is fortified through a number of measures, including the planting of natural vegetation and managing the accumulation of the seagrass on the beach. What we use is the sand that collects against our marina breakwater and uh, we harvest it from there and put it on sections of beach that have washed away from last time. Hopefully the vegetation that's establishing there will hang on to some of it. Those measures, the City Council says, important for protecting and maintaining the beach environment, including against tidal surges and storm events, which could potentially damage beachside assets if not managed. The sea is very unpredictable. You don't really know what it's got to throw at us. And uh, so we could have some big high tides that take a lot of sand away that was otherwise placed there. Mark Zeta, 7 Spencer Gulf News. Stay with us. A Far West resident wins big at the State Tourism Awards. And we will have all the action from the weekend's local cricket matches. A board member for the Royal Flying Doctors Far West District has been recognised for her efforts in promoting local tourism. Ruth Sando said she was humbled by winning the award for her tireless efforts in promoting the region. A passionate advocate for rural and remote New South Wales, Ms Sandow shocked to receive the Dean Gordard Award for Outstanding Contribution by an individual at the State Tourism Awards. She keeps busy in the community through land care, distance education and Far West Regional Development and Tourism. I never expected anything like this. Um, in fact, it was quite a surprise to me to know that I'd even been nominated. Miss Sandow established the Milprinka Heritage and Tourism Association, which has 100 volunteers. She also started the Sturt Steps program, helping link tourists to the approximate route of Charles Sturt's 1845 expedition. Well, I think it's important for people um, to, to visit the area to gain um, a better understanding of um, this part of Outback New South Wales. Miss Sandow also pleased with her time as board member of the regional chapter of the Flying Doctor Service, where she advocated for improved mental health services. I'm proud to think that our service was able to help when people really needed it and are continuing to do so. Joshua Mercer, 7 Spencer Golf News. Some of the Air Peninsula's best cricket players competed for the Henderson Shield over the weekend. The final seeing Port Lincoln and Eastern Air clashing, with the stakes high for both sides. It's local cricket's most prestigious one-day prize. This year's Henderson Shield Grand Final saw old rivals compete at the crease. It started in 1969 by a fellow called Basil Henderson. And it was basically between Port Lincoln and Cleveland and just expanded uh, lots of different combinations with associations coming and going. Port Lincoln and Eastern Air coming into the matchup undefeated. The teams formed by the best cricket players in the region. They've had to play uh, two games um, to, to qualify and they've played against some quality opposition. And so you would expect the best two teams on Air Peninsula in each of the three grades to be playing. For some, it's a new challenge. Playing on grass wickets, a rarity for Eastern Air players. Especially on the turf, we don't have um, turf down in our league, so it's good for us to experience that bit of a change-up. So 
Um, they definitely have a lot of experienced players that um, I think we'll be looking to learn off of today. After a weekend of hard work, players will now turn their focus back to their respective leagues. With finals around the corner, those involved say every match will count. We've all got a, a, a few games, minor rounds to go, and then it's into the, the heated finals. So hopefully COVID, the heat and the rain stay away on Saturday. Henry Millick, 7 Spencer Golf News. Staying with cricket, and Wandera defeated Southport to remain top of the Port Perry Cricket Association ladder. Proprietary are also looking dangerous, with two rounds left before finals. Here's Christian Komenos with this week's Cricket Wrap. Round 14 of Port Perry Cricket saw thrilling matches from all four teams, with Wandera and Props showing why they are this season's favourites to go all the way. Wandera batted first against Southport at Memorial Oval, putting 158 runs on the board for the loss of five wickets. Darcy Putty was caught and bowled for 15 before Patrick McNamara came to the crease. He and Andrew Congdon putting on a convincing partnership, combining for 74 runs for the Rams. Liam Drever took three wickets and fell just three runs short of a half century when he came into bat for the Pirates. It wasn't enough, with Southport all out for just 108. In the other match, Props defeated Port Germain by eight wickets. Port Germain's batters couldn't find their footing, putting just 109 runs on the board. Props were able to reach the target in 33 overs, thanks to a strong partnership from Austin Waters and Josh Cunningham. Only one game was played in Port Augusta over the weekend, with Centrals beating Corn by three wickets. In Wyala, Rupina scored a big win. West Wyala couldn't chase Rupina's 154, the Roos skittling them for just 101. And North Wyala had convincing seven-wicket win over Central Wyala. In Broken Hill, West struggled against North. They made just 90, North eventually winning by eight wickets. It was a similar story across town, with South all out for 112. Centrals were in a hurry to finish the game, chasing down the runs in 20 overs to win by six wickets. Over in Port Lincoln, Tasman thrashed Todd River by 91 runs. Andrew Frick top scoring with 119, smashing 12 fours and five sixes along the way. The match between Waybacks and Charlton was called off due to COVID. Finally, in the Henderson Shield, Port Lincoln were too strong for Eastern Air in the final. The home side cruising to a nine-wicket win. And that's it for this weekend's cricket. We'll be back tomorrow night with the wrap-up of the region's other sports. Stay with us after the break. We'll have all the local weather details with Alex Sykes. That's coming up next here on 7 Spencer Golf News. Hello again. Time now to take a look at what's happening in the weather across the Spencer Golf and Broken Hill. With all the details, here's Alex Sykes. Thanks, John, and happy Monday, everyone. And what a hot one it was across parts of our region, some areas reaching the high 30s and even 40. It's looking like a beautiful week with milder conditions towards the back half. More detail on that in just a moment at 3pm today. While it was partly cloudy and 30 degrees, Broken Hill was mostly sunny and 37, and Cooper Pedy is where it reached 40 degrees. Looking further out across the region now, Port Augusta was 34, a lot milder in Port Lincoln, 23 there. Port Piri was 35, Adelaide reached 28, Woodner was a very hot and mostly sunny 36, Kadena and Clare reached 27 and Clare was mostly sunny and 36. Taking a look at the satellite image now, band of cloud clipping the far south and over the west with a cold front and trough is bringing little, if any, rain. Skies are clear elsewhere in the state under a ridge of high pressure. Moving on to tomorrow's weather outlook now and we'll start with the Gulf waters. South to south easterly winds 10 to 15 knots, seas around 1 metre and south to south westerly swells below 1 metre. Partly cloudy in most parts tomorrow, Port Lincoln will get to 24. Cleve is set to reach a high of 26 degrees. Woodner will get to a high of 35. Wiley is set to reach 28. Port Augusta with a high of 38. 4 degrees there and Kadena will be 30. Port Piri with a max of 34, Clare 33 and Broken Hill be mostly sunny and a top of 37 degrees.
Taking a look further through the week now, those partly cloudy conditions continuing into Wednesday. Port Augusta will reach 30, Port Lincoln 25, Port Pirie will get to 29, 35 degrees in Broken Hill. Cooper Pedy will have a high of 38. Port Pirie and Woodnall will reach 28 on Thursday, mostly sunny in Port Augusta with 27, sunny in Broken Hill with 30 degrees there, partly cloudy in Port Lincoln 24, cloud clearing in Wowler with 25. Similar conditions on Friday, mostly sunny in Woodnall with 30 degrees. Kadena will be mostly sunny and 27 and Cooper Pedy will be sunny and 33. So as mentioned earlier, John, temperatures certainly do drop in the second half of the week. And that's all the weather from me for tonight. It's back to you. Thanks for that, Alex. And that's the local news this Monday evening. Thanks for joining us. I'll have updates later and we will return tomorrow night at the usual time of 7pm. Until then, enjoy your evening. Good night.